Good. Okay, so hopefully most of them might be new for the session for today. Uh, so I'll just give a small recap about myself and then after that we'll start on to take on as what topics will be covered for the entire session and then we'll go forward. Okay. So to start on with, my name is Murli. So I have trained more than 5,000 plus students on both direct sessions and then also online sessions. Then, um, uh, sorry, uh, forgot to ask you. I uh, guess everyone can hear me and then can you see my screen? Can you just ping me in the chat windows? Yes. Can everyone hear me? And then can you see my screen? Just ping me in the chat windows. Yes. Cool. Uh, yeah, Ramya, Siddhartha, you guys also can hear me, right? Yes, yes. Cool, that's good. Okay, yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay, so my name is Murli. I have trained around more than 5,000 plus students on both direct sessions and also online sessions. I am also a corporate trainer for IBM and Cisco. Cisco, and then after that, Wipro over here, I have taken. Then also I take college guest lectures like actually what Cambridge and then Bain MIT in Rustan, like those various colleges I used to go take uh, guest lectures on Java. Okay, so here totally for five years I'm into the training field. I started on actually what with uh, uh, my career by more than eight years experience in the software industry. So first I was working on with QTP automation. Then after that Selenium uh, with uh, web driver with java automation then selenium with ruby automation then after that cucumber i was working for some time and then currently i'm working on with mobile automation apm here so for i'm doing it for the uh, ios based iphone device automation that's what i'm doing currently so this entire package of this training is about selenium with java so totally we're going to cover with actually with selenium with java here so first to start with topics level as what things will be covered, I'll tell you. So I'll start with Core Java here. So in Core Java, actually what if you see, out of the entire Java, there is totally split into two. One is Core Java, the other one is actually what? My uh, J2W. Okay, so J2W is actually what? The uh, a complex level of information where they connect with springs and then the MVC, all those things actually what related to the development field will come. So we automation engineers, we no need that those things. We just need actually what the core Java. The core Java is just 40% of the entire Java. And then also in that totally 70% is more than enough for our automation because we are going to just verify whether the product is perfectly working or not we are not going to develop the product so for us it's so easier to know what information that we need for our automation so it's just so simple concepts is what we are going to need for the entire selenium okay so starting with we'll go with core java inside core java what are the topics i will be forwarding you the session topics to you in a detailed way we'll see that then after that we'll go on with Selenium IDE. So Selenium actually one totally of three versions, IDE, RC, and then WebDriver. There are three versions. Currently in the industry, everyone uses only WebDriver. So IDE and RC actually one are old tools which they are using in the market over there still, which they have started very earlier long back. Okay, no one uses IDE, RC they use. But currently in the industry, no one uses that. Okay, so but why we will look for IDE here means because to understand what is automation and then the basics of it to understand IDE is so easy. It's just a record and playback tool. Okay, we record the scenario. Okay, then after that actually what we play back that scenario. Okay, so with the help of this Selenium ID, we will understand what is automation why automation is necessary in the industry okay then after that we'll jump on with selenium add-ons okay what are the selenium add-ons means we have firebug firepath firefinder then xpath css 
what are all these add-ons will help me means for example there is a web page in the web page there are two text boxes username and password so how my selenium will know i need to enter the username in the first text box and then the password in the second text box okay so every element in the page it will have their own properties okay it will have their own properties so what selenium is going to do means it's going to actually what take those properties and then it's going to work on it okay so what is that it's going to do means so simple it's going to actually what take the properties from the web page and then based on that property it's going to identify that element okay so those properties how to identify based on this actually what these xpath and css so firebug will give you all the html properties in that specifically i want to identify one element with xpath and css we will identify and finally we will identify the element in the page okay that is about selenium add-ons okay in a detailed way we will see later just for an understanding i'm seeing right now then we will go for the selenium web driver okay so selenium web driver is a tool which is entirely full and full actually what hot cake in the market everyone uses right now in the industry because it's a open source so everyone go forward to utilize that okay so most of the elements actually what they were able to cover over here that's why everyone focuses on selenium web driver okay so once we learn okay so what we are going to learn in this so how to automate all the different kinds of elements in the web page that's what we are going to automate sorry is that only the elements that are actually what available in the web page that we need to automate no it's not only that so there are more than that for example elements level it's text box text box video button and then a link is there drop down is there search box is there and then actually auto suggest field is there like that we have different things along with that we also know uh, frames is there okay how to handle frames alert boxes how to handle uh, and then how to do mouse movement actions over there how to drag and drop an element then extra if we have two to three windows how to travel from one window to the another window and then edit the element we have some window based pop ups how to handle those window pop ups like that all different kinds of variations we will be learning in selenium web drive after that we will jump on to the framework so framework level if you see we have two things one is j unit another one is test engine so here there are two things j unit and test engine framework is there so first we will learn the basics of j unit and test engine both then after that we will take actually what uh, application a uh, open source application we will take it so based on that we will try to construct our framework why because framework if you want to understand you need to take a project and based on that project project means simple it's an application okay so based on that application actually what we need to automate and then write our scenarios and then capture the reports all those things screenshots everything we have to do because that's why actually what we need mandatory one project over here so that we will do so now how actually what we will do first we will take jnit framework so jnit framework if you see we will try with a keyword driven approach okay a keyword driven approach then plus actually what we will use and plus log 4j okay a simple basic level of framework is what we are going to learn over here in the jnit framework because before going to the complex framework is better to actually what go with the little bit the easier one then after the test ng framework we will see so we will go with the hybrid driven approach what is the hybrid driven means the combination of the data driven plus data driven okay uh, sorry the combination of the data driven plus modeler driven we will go for it so here we will go with help of the maven plus page object model plus log 4j plus test ng listeners and then capturing the screenshots and then after that um uh, prepare the reports over their html maven html reports like all the 
current stuffs what we are using in the industry everything we will be using it in the test change framework so, so this is the framework currently in all the industry they use it so that's what we are going to learn from the test change a detail a complex level of framework because first once you learn the uh, a basic framework learning the complex framework is always easier that's what we are going to do here. then after that we will learn for github so what is github means that is usually we write the code and then we have the code in our system so now what we are going to do means we are going to write the code and then we are going to save the code in the central repository so what is that central repository means that is so simple that is save the code over there in a the server so there are five members in a team okay all the five members actually what they should use the common code because when i am writing you will not know what is the code i have in my system i will not know what code you have in the system so for that only we use the git github server what the github server will do means so simple right now actually what yeah i will write the code and then i will push it to the github server same thing you will write the code and then you will push it to the github server then the next day morning i will come into the office then i will take the code from the github server now i will have my code plus your code same thing you will come and then you will actually what pull the code now you will have my code plus your code so at the morning everyone has the same code base in the system then we will write the code on top of it then we will again push it then the next day morning when we take it so everyone will have a common code base working on it that's what the github server will do got it then after the github we'll go for the jenkins okay what is this jenkins is going to do so simple so right now jenkins is what it's actually what right now um i want to schedule my automation run every day morning five o'clock and then evening by nine o'clock so i don't want to sit in the system and then i want to run the code when i schedule it automatically it will run the code and then prepare the report and send me an email to me so all those things actually what i can have it in the jenkins so one i can actually what uh, uh, give the github server location over there directly and then i can utilize it so that it directly takes always the uh, uh, the current code from the system and then do it and if the developers actually what push the build automatically trigger the actually what builds over there so that also actually what we can do everything can be done with help of the jenkins here okay so this is what the entire package we are going to learn here any questions on topics level for anyone guys anyone has any questions on topic level any questions so next we'll come for the duration uh, before that i just need to know anyone has any questions cool okay so the duration of the course will be 2.5 months so i take a little bit extra compared to the other trainers the reason behind this what means because uh, when you are learning something actually what at end of the session actually what you should feel that actually what you are able to do it by yourself okay then only actually what it is worth to learn okay so i take it little bit slower and another thing is what means every topic i'll take three programs and then one or two programs i will execute and one or two programs i will make you guys to execute in the class itself okay so you will be very it will be very easy for you whenever you have actually what uh, to write something okay i will give assignments you want to do it so you will not have the startup problem so you will already would have been done the exercise in the class then you will be doing it it will be easy for you to do it okay that's the one reason behind it i take it little bit slow but you will be able to do it by yourself later that's the main thing understood please good okay so um before going on to actually what to show the documents also can i have all your email ids guys so that i can uh, end of the session i'll be forwarding you the mails so how actually what the session will be there means so for example every day actually what session once it's been completed so what i used to do means i used to actually what send a mail within max of one to two hours so i'll be sending it like this so for example today's topic what are the things we have covered and the youtube url where we have stored uh, 
stored the recording over there. Then for that day, do we have any code files or something? Okay. Then if I have assignments or something like that, you guys will be actually what getting the assignments to extra. Okay. So assignments will be based on actually what that day topic what we have covered. Based on that, I'll be giving you assignments over there. That's the thing. Okay. So every day session will be recorded and then will be sent to you actually on the same day so that you can practice it whenever you have a doubt you can go through the recording and then you can go through it that's the main thing got it uh can i have everyone's mail id ping to me Uh, so actually what it's like today and tomorrow actually uh, the session has been already started over there so just i have taken actually what a one day session for them so that's what actually what today and tomorrow we are going to cover so uh, what is that we have covered till now is just the installation of java jdk and then eclipse okay that is what still now we are covered in the session over there so usually the session will be what means session timings it be a Monday to Friday session, okay? Every day morning 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time. A one hour session for Monday to Friday, okay? So you guys have joined newly, so that's why actually what uh, we are just taking a backup class over there. That's the one thing. So before when you come on Monday, so today and tomorrow only you guys will have, when you come for the Monday, you guys will be uh, in the same phase actually what, what the students they were okay just we have taken the installation part only got it guys cool. so next i'll jump on it um it's like from preeti and ramya alone i need to get the mail it is guys you can just send me preeti and then ramya so i got from vidyavati and then uh, Siddhartha from Preeti and then uh, Ramya Alun, can you please forward your email it is so that I can send the details to you. Okay, good. So next thing. So we have done with actually what the session topics, what are the things that we will be covering. The next thing is what means we will go on. So how actually what sessions are documented okay so you guys will have a lot of assignments actually what the initial stage over there when you're starting because once you do that it will be easy same thing in document level actually what every class level most of the things have been documented so how the documents are prepared means based on my students actually what they come up with doubts over there so based on that actually what most of the documents are covered where usually they used to come in whenever i ask them to install a software so that is the place actually what they used to come for a doubt. So based on that only actually what I have created these documents. See, so if I want to install Eclipse over there, so I'll be given information as where actually what to go and download the uh, what is it, your uh, tool. Then after that, how to get identify of the tool which you need to download. Then after that actually what, once you download it and then how to open that Eclipse and then use it like that step by step it will be with screenshots only same thing we will explain and then the same thing you will have with screenshots over here okay the same thing if i want to go for java jdk installation So how to download, where to download, how to set up the JDK. All those things will be with screenshots, which you guys will be seeing soon. Okay, so like that, some tools. Okay, so most of the documents will be clearly mentioned. The throw one throws.
So which in exa with the examples, what is the difference between throw and then throws over there that we'll be having. So next thing, we still have some things for Java over there. We'll just um, see for Selenium now once. So XPath if I come. That is also, we will have a clear detail information. With an example shown how to get the XPath over there for this with the tree structure. Then after that, write the XPath for that. Like that we have there. Then the next thing actually what? If it is Selenium level, if I want to launch a browser, what is the syntax? If I need to enter the URL, what is the syntax? What are the different kinds of elements? And then for everything, different, different things to work on with the text box. What is the syntax for that button, checkbox, radio button, drop downs, drop downs for a list taking multi-select combo box like that for everything what are the syntax we have for that we have a code for that then the same thing actually what if it is selenium ide so that also will be with screenshots how to install first where to install then after that we get the selenium id then using the selenium id actually what where to get here how to work on with selenium id with screenshots everything i'm just running fast over there because these things i'll be showing you in a detailed way so today just to show you what documents we have on those things and then how the documents have been prepared that's what i'm trying to show you same thing if i come for the framework level also we will have documents for that so for the test ng and then for the J unit, and then for the ant, everything, log 4 j everything we will be having screenshots over there. Got it? Then every day actually what session will be recorded and then will be sent to you also on the same day. Got it? Any questions guys related to documents? Anyone has any questions so far? Uh, yes, Preeti, we train on real-time projects. So real-time project means it's an open source project is what we will take. Because nowhere you go actually what you will get actually what real working project in the actually what company. Because why I mean those are all security related things that we cannot share our projects to actually what the others. So we take a real-time project sessions. So here actually what we'll take a project management domain and then after that the travel domain and then we will be explaining over there how to automate over there. okay and open source project that's what we used to do okay good okay so now let us jump on with actually what the sessions so any questions guys so far anyone has any questions so far So then we'll jump on actually what to the session. So we'll have a five minutes break because I just don't want to, uh, before starting any topic over there, I used to give a small break. Then I used to make you guys to refresh your mind and come so that we can go for it. So now actually first we are going to see actually what, how a normally a program executes, how a Java program executes, and then how it is differing. Then based on that actually what, we will install the Java JDK Eclipse. And then we'll see how actually what in Eclipse when we create a program, it has been relating related to whatever we are going to learn. Here. Okay, that's what we are going to do. So we will have actually what a short break, then we will continue. So 8 5 a.m. now, 8 10 we will connect. Okay, after five minutes, we will again connect. Okay, good. Okay, so 8 10 after five minutes, we will again connect over there. Thank you. A short break.
No. Yes. So we'll continue the session. So still now anyone has any questions so far? So I have just told you about and given an introduction about myself and then the session topics. What are the things that will be covered we saw? The duration of actually what the course we saw. Then the session timings we have seen. Then the next thing is actually what we have seen. The documents actually what what all I will be sharing to you I have shown you. Then the recordings actually what every day I will be sending to you within one hour after the session will be there. Then assignments actually what will be there. That was I just told you over there. Okay, so this is the thing. Anyone has any questions so far as whatever we have covered? Can I can I get actually what reply in the window? So any questions from anyone so far? Uh, it will be good actually what if you guys can chat me in the window so that I will understand that whether you have questions or not. Cool. Okay. Hey, thanks, pretty. So next, we will see actually what how a normally a program will execute and then how a normally a Java program will execute. What's the difference? Okay. So uh, usually what we used to write a program in a notepad or any tool, then we will save that actually what with an extension for Java means dot Java, Ruby means dot RB, then HTML means dot HTML. Like that based on the language type we used to store them correct so now here what we will do so whatever informations we write by ourselves is called as a high level language okay whatever we write by ourselves is actually what an high level language so each and every line will be called as a statements so those high level language a human can understand but a system cannot understand so what we need to do we will give it to a translator. So what the translator job here means so simple. It will convert the high level language to the machine level language that is zeros and ones. Okay, that's what it's going to do here. So what we will do actually what we have two types of translator. One is a compiler. Another one is an interpreter. Got it. So what it will do, it will convert the high level language to the machine level language. Then it will be given for the CPU for execution. Okay. So what is the difference between the compiler and interpreter? Because both the things are going to convert into a high level to a machine level language. Nothing different. But what is the difference into that means? So simple. So if they have thousand lines of code in a system, okay. So uh, in a file. So what it will do, the compiler, it will convert the entire thousand lines of code then after that only it will be given for execution okay compiler it will translate the entire statements then it will be given for execution so the same thing interpreter what it will do okay interpreter line by line conversion and then execution so one line it will convert then it will execute the second line will be converted executed third line will be converted executed so that's what it will do so what are the advantage and disadvantages of that means? So compiler, if you take, it will take a time for me for the entire conversion. In case, if there is any error, five errors are there in the program, in the entire thousand lines, it will just list out actually what these are the five errors, please rectify it. So only after we clear those errors, then only actually what I can execute the program. That's what the compiler will do. Okay. It will throw all the errors at the beginning. Then after that only, if I clear it, I can start the execution. So for the uh, conversion before that, it will take a little bit time for me for the execution. Okay, Not a big delay, uh, one or two seconds delay over there. That's a one thing. The same thing, interpreter, what it will do means it will be executed very fast. Why? Because only one line it converts, execution starts. Second line convert, execution starts. So it runs in a fraction of a second over there. But the problem here is what means if I have an error in the 300, 500 line, 600, 700 line means once it comes to the 300 line, then only it will know that there is an error. Then again, if it comes to the 500 line, uh, so, okay, I need to clear the 300 line error. Then after that, again, I need to rerun. 
then again it will stop in the 500th line i need to clear it again need to start it then again 700th line then again clear the error then start the execution so like that every time when we get an error it stops the execution once we clear then only it will go for the next level that's what an interpreter will do got it the same thing here java how it will be executed see okay i know that actually what some of you guys actually what you already would have learned these things in your school or college days but be with me uh, for some time over there because once we learn basics and then we are strong in basics this might be you might be thinking that these are all very, very small things but uh, learning each and every small basics will be always helpful for you on a long run okay that's what i'm doing okay just be with me for some time uh, some days alone so that we will cover the basics and then we'll go clearly on the original topics okay so next thing how java program executes and then how it is differing means so simple so we write the program and then we save it actually what with an extension called dot java here okay so then that is being given to the compiler so what compiler will do it will convert the entire information so thousand lines of code it will convert and then it will be given in a dot class file okay it will not be given to the execution it will create a dot class file and then that converted information okay it will be stored in a dot class file okay so the java compiler it will convert the dot java file and then it creates a dot class file okay then that dot class file will be given to the jvm because that dot class file can be understandable only by the java virtual machine alone apart from that no one can actually what understand the code got it so that's what here we are doing so what we are doing we are actually what giving the dot class file to the jvm the jvm actually what it will do means it will again do an another level of conversion so what type of conversion before it is compiler now it is interpreter interpreter means what line by line conversion so that means the execution is faster here okay compiler actually what it converts the entire statement after the only execution starts a little bit a delay will be there but interpreter level execution is faster okay so what is the advantage also i'll tell you here but you might be thinking compiler conversion is there interpreter conversion so it should be damn slow but it is not like that i'll tell you how it really works in the real time environment so now actually what again another level of conversion will be done then it will be actually what given to the system for execution okay so in the real time world what was the problem they were facing means so for example i have developed an application then i want to sell it into the market now what happened so the client will be asking for the demo so that time i need to send the entire code to the client then based on that actually what the client will execute and see whether the things are fine okay that's what actually what usually should happen so here right now what will happen right now for me so uh, there is a chance if there is a competitor actually what he also wants to see my code okay it's not that always everyone are genuine there are some persons actually what who Uh, my competitor he will actually what want to see my code he will actually what uh, come as actually what as a client and then after that he will get my code and then based on that he will duplicate in another system within 6 months of time i spent around 2 to 2 and a half years to actually what create my application but he will duplicate my system within 6 months and then he will be competitor for me that's a problem most of them were facing at the beginning so to avoid that what we are doing means in java so first level of conversion dot java file will be actually what converted to a dot class file through the compiler okay so uh, one level of conversion will be done so where we will clear out all the syntax errors and then whatever it is there everything we will be clearing it then we will create the dot class file correct then after that that dot class file once it has been created that information we will make it a bunch and then we will send it to the client because the client he needs to see the see the demo of my application not the code so here what will happen my code the dot java files are safer with me the programmers they will have the dot java files they don't send to anyone 
they send only the dot class file alone okay they send only the dot class file alone then actually what that has been given to the jvm here then the jvm actually what will be again doing in another level of conversion then actually what it will be given for execution so now actually what the uh, the customer will have only the dot class file now when he wants to execute it runs actually what in a fraction of seconds it will be so fast for execution that's why it took here it is faster okay execution is faster here because they will have only the dot class file got, got it um everyone clear guys can i get a reply from everyone so what is the usage of the dot java file what is the usage of the dot class file is everyone clear on this super cool so next thing actually what jvm is actually what i told you it's actually what java virtual machine which is needed to run my dot class file apart from that we need to know other two things one is jre another one is jdk jre is what means java runtime environment what is this java runtime environment any language you take it needs actually what any software you take actually what it needs actually what a place to run in my system okay if you take a skype it needs actually what a specific particular place okay that means where their library files are being stored okay that is where their code files are being stored that is the place actually what it will interact and then the execution will start right so that is what here this one okay java runtime environment the next is jdk what is the jdk means jdk is the complete kit so java actually what is like actually what a part of a kit jdk is a complete kit where it will have the everything java compiler jvm jre everything it will have so when i want to initially learn java i don't want the jdk but when we come to the selenium framework right so till selenium we know need the full need of the jdk but when we come to the framework we are going to integrate with actually what the third party softwares like ant maven log4j all those things okay so for those that's so not log4j ant maven and all so for those things and all when we want to integrate with the third party softwares we need the jdk kit okay so that's why now itself actually what we will install the java jdk and then after that we will go and learn java okay so jdk is what means nothing it's actually what the complete kit where we will be needing it for our selenium framework got it guys so this is for today so tomorrow what we will see actually what i'm stopping the session with this now so tomorrow actually what we are going to see for actually the installation of java jdk and then the eclipse and then after that we will see how to create a workspace project package and then how to write a basic program so that is what we are going to see by tomorrow morning 7:30 am indian standard time okay the same time tomorrow you will be joining the session so there we will see the installation part and then how to write a basic program so this is what has been covered for them so if you come for tomorrow then from monday onwards you will be joining in the we a original session where from monday to friday 7:30 am indian standard okay tomorrow come for the same time so that we can complete our backup class got it good uh, ramya can i have your mail id alone i have got others mail id can i have your mail id alone uh sure sure priti so uh, if you want to contact me you can just contact me in my number i'll just forward to you it's my whatsapp number also you can just contact me and then my mail id is yes you can contact me okay cool guys thank you so with this i'll stop for today tomorrow we'll we'll connect again thank you bye guys